a couple of basics about the PLC Next starter kit. So on the left hand side, the largest module that you see here is going to be the PLC. And next to it, you're going to find the four slot input and output module that will be populated with three modules that we've discussed in the last tutorial. So that's going to be on the top left hand side, the digital output module, followed by the digital input module, and then the analog input module with the four inputs on the bottom right hand side. And it's important to it's important to pay attention to the location of these modules as we will be configuring them as such in our software. If you want to reallocate the positions of these modules, make sure to pay attention to what has been specified in your kit. Now, the two connections that need to be made to the PLC are going to be power and ethernet. So on the bottom left hand side, you're going to notice two wires, one which is red and the other one which is blue. And that's going to be your 24 volt power. On the bottom left hand side of the panel kit, you're going to have a plug with an adapter that comes in the kit. If you are using a PLC on its own, you're going to have to provide 24 volts DC supply to the PLC. The other important thing to notice is that the IO module also requires power, which will be taken care of for you on the starter kit, but something to pay attention to if you're going to assemble your own system. So the PLC Next does not provide power over the backplane. And I have an example of a different module, so you'll notice that the form factor is slightly different than the one on the kit, so you also need to provide power to this specific module within the red and the blue marked slots. So those are once again going to take 24 volts. VDC. And last but not least, as I've mentioned, we are going to connect over Ethernet between the PLC and our laptop. So there's going to be two ports provided on the bottom side of the controller, as you can see here. And we're going to plug into the first port. You may use the second one for your home network or otherwise it's going to contain the same exact IP address. The last thing that I do want to mention is that there's going to be this little slider that you can remove underneath which you're going to find the reset button for the controller. You're going to find an SD card slot which may not be populated because the SD card does not come with the kit. If you choose to purchase that you can do so through the PLC next store. And what's also extremely important is the password that's going to be listed on the PLC right here along with some status LED lights and the MAC address that you will be using to identify that on the network. I highly recommend that you write down this password as we will be using it in several locations throughout the tutorials. The default IP address of the PLC Next controller out of the box is going to be 192.168.1.10. However, we will go through the configuration steps of the laptop in order to be able to connect to the controller. So in order to test our connection, we're going to open up command prompt. And you'll notice that I do have two navigation bars at the bottom of the screen. And that's because I'm using a virtual machine to host the PLC Next engineer software. So here I'm using the the desktop of the original computer and we're going to try and ping the IP address that I've just mentioned so 192.168.1.10 and you'll notice that there's going to be no responses and that's because our network adapter of the computer was not set up to, I, to the IP address that's going to be on the same subnet so I'm going to just cancel out of that search and what I'm going to have to do is search for control panel and from the control panel, network and sharing center. I'm then going to select change adapter settings. And from the adapters, I need to find the adapter that's going to be configured for my ethernet card. So notice that I'm using a USB based adapter. So from USB to ethernet. And so this might be different for your specific use case. Double click on that specific adapter click on properties and this is where we're going to modify the IP version 4 address of our computer. So I'm going to double click that and use the following IP address. So 192.168.1 and here I'm going to specify an IP address that's going to be different than my controller. So this could be 11 and anywhere from 1 to 254 excluding the 10 so I'm going to specify 200 just because it's something that I've been using by default in my home network and I'm going to click on subnet mask so 255 255 255.0 
press on OK, and then we're going to close out of the settings. We're going to reopen command prompt and ping the same IP address, so 192.168.1.10. And at this point in time, we should be receiving a response from the controller. Once we have a connection to the PLC, we can open any browser and type in the IP address, which is going to bring us to the starting page of the PLC next. So you may notice that there, it's going to be not secure by default. We can set up SSL in a different tutorial, but there's nothing, nothing to be worried about. You can proceed as expected to the IP address. So there's going to be a couple of links. The main one to configure the PLC is going to be this easy configuration and you can just type in the IP address and slash WBM. So either by clicking on this button or changing this welcome to WBM, which is going to bring you to the console that will require a username and password. And as I've mentioned before, the password is going to be on your physical hardware while the username as the default is going to be admin. So here I'm typing in admin and then the password that I had shown you before. And then I'm going to press on login. So this is going to be the main window from which you're going to configure your PLC. We're going to run some applications in a separate video. That being said, what's interesting to notice is that here you have the firmware revision, you've got the Mac address. And so if you have multiple devices that you're looking to deploy, you can certainly double check that you're connected to the right one by the physical label on that same device. One thing I want to point out, so in the configuration tab under network, you can change the IP address, you can change the subnet mask as well as the default gateway. And this is what it's going to be necessary to move this to a different network or subnet. That being said, for the purpose of these tutorials, we're going to keep the default IP address of 192.168.1.10 to make it simple for everybody else. Of course, if you're going to reconfigure this, you're going to apply and then reboot the device, which we're also going to do in a following episode.